and I want to decree financial freedom, liberty, jubilee over your businesses, your accounts, everything you set your hands to financially, that you'll walk in a place of prosperity. Then I want to decree over you, Psalms 35, that God would, would take pleasure in your prosperity. And then Psalms 118, that God would send prosperity now. Third John verse two, that you'll prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I want to decree over you, Psalm one, that whatever you do uh, will prosper. You'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I want to decree over your life, Psalms 23, that you'll be anointed with oil. Your cup will run over. I want to decree prosperity, favor, grace, blessing, multiplication, increase, Psalms 115, that you'll increase more and more, you and your children. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, that God would make all grace or favor abound toward you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. I want to speak rapid breakthroughs, rapid success, rapid prosperity, rapid finances. Let you strike it rich. Let riches and wealth strike your life. Based on Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and God adds no sorrow. So let the blessing of the Lord come upon you. Let riches strike your life and let you walk in abundance, favor and prosperity all the days of your life. Even as you partner and even as you sow with this ministry, I decree it over you now in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank all of those that are supporting and those that are sponsoring and those that are giving and being a part of this ministry. I thank you so much for what you're doing. And um, let me go right into the word today. Um, I'm going to read the verses, Second Corinth, uh, Second Kings, rather, chapter four, verses 26 through 28. Um, this is the, the background of the story is there was a Shunammite woman that had made a place for Elisha to stay. She made a room for Eli Elisha, a prophet's chamber. She would see the man of God going back and forth. She told her husband, I perceive this is a man of God. And they built him a place to stay in his journey. And then Elisha asked her, you know, what do you want? Tell me what you want. And um, she really said, I don't, I don't want anything. I'm blessed. Um, I have enough resources. But then Elisha found out that she had not had a child. And so Elisha prophesied to her that by this time next year, you're going to have a child. And um, she was older, so it was probably a shock to her. But, you know, that, that shows you the principle of when you bless prophets and men of God, that, that God does release blessings in your life. It is one of the foundational principles uh, found in uh, Matthew chapter 10. That if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. So God rewarded. God rewarded this woman with a child, with a son. She conceived and brought forth a son. But then in the, in the process of son, as the child grew older, uh, evidently he was out in the field and um, he, he had a sunstroke. He, he had sunstroke and he died. And uh, so the woman of God um, came and um, was wanting, wanting to meet with, with the prophet. Because her thing was, I didn't ask you for this son. I didn't ask you for this child. Now he's dead. And so she came in a lot of despair. And as she was approaching Elisha, um, these are what the, the verses say. Second Kings chapter four, verse 26. Run now, uh, I pray thee to meet her. And say unto her, when, when, she, when she saw him come, when he, when he saw her coming, he told his servant to run and meet her. Um, and say unto her, is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. And when she came to the man of God, to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, let her alone for her soul is vexed within her. So the prophet knew there's something wrong here. And the Lord has hid it from me and has not told me. Then she said, did I, did I desire a son of my Lord 
Did I not say do not deceive me? And then the, the rest of the story is Elisha goes to the house, lays upon the child, raises the child from the dead. The child sneezes seven times um, and is raised from the dead. And one of the greatest miracles of, of Elisha's ministry. But I, I want you to notice what Elisha said. He said, let her alone for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord has hid it from me and has not told me. That's an interesting statement from a prophet. That God had hidden it from the prophet, had not told the prophet. The prophet did not know what had happened. And she had to tell the prophet what had happened. Now, this is interesting because what do you do? If you're a prophetic person, if you're a prophet of God, what do you do? Or how do you respond when God hides things from you? Uh, the Bible says the secret things belong to the Lord. So God does have secrets. But then these things that are revealed belong to us and to our children. So God does reveal things to prophetic people. God can show you a lot. But I often teach in the prophetic that just because you're prophetic does not mean that God will show you everything about an individual, about a situation. You may have to inquire. If someone comes to you for counsel, you may have to inquire. You may have to ask them, what is the problem here? Some people think that prophets know everything and prophets see everything, but they don't. They don't. They're limited. Remember, I always tell the story of when Samuel went to anoint uh, the king. All God told him was go to the house of Jesse. And Jesse had seven sons. And uh, every time one son would stand before the prophet, all God would say, he's not the one. And David was not among the sons that were there. And so the prophet was confused because he said, you know, I know God sent me here to anoint one of your sons to be the prop, to be the king. And then Jesse said, I have another son, David. They went and brought David in. And then when David walked in, God said, he is the one anoint him. Notice God did not tell Samuel who he was before he saw him. Uh, God did not give him his name. He didn't know who he was. He didn't even know. Um, Jesse had another son. So God does hide things. And as a prophet, you have to walk by faith. You have to live by faith as a prophetic person. And I'm not making everyone a prophet. You have to live by faith. You, you have to deal with the fact that sometimes God hides things. God doesn't show you everything. Um, and so Elisha said, God has hidden it from me. He's not told me. That I know this woman. I was an integral part of, uh, she blessed me. Um, I prophesied a son to her. So she's not a stranger. I know who she is. And, and, and she's in so much despair. It would seem as if God would show me what is the problem. But he said, God has hidden it from me. God has not told me. And then he asked her, what is the problem? And she tells him uh, to come because her son had died. And uh, notice the miracle that resulted. God worked a miracle. One of Elisha's greatest miracles came after... He had, he had to inquire and after God had hidden it from him. That's, that's an amazing dichotomy that God would work one of his greatest miracles in Elisha's life while at the same time hiding it from Elisha and, and not telling Elisha what the situation was. Now, there could have been, we don't know in God's wisdom why he hides things. It, it could have been a reason. I'm sure it was. God has reasons why he tells us things, why he hides things from us. You know, God is a God of wisdom. And sometimes there's certain things we may not need to know. There's certain things we don't, we don't have to know. Um, and so God in his wisdom does hide things from us. I know we want to know everything. You know, COVID hit the church and it was hidden from most prophetic people. Most prophetic people did not see COVID coming. And it, it really, it really disturbed me when it hit. And I said, God, how is it that more of us didn't see this coming? And, um, and so sometimes we have to understand that God does reveal things. God can show you something, but God can also hide things from you. It's, it's God's uh, right. It's God's wisdom because all, all the secret things belong to God. Now, there's another verse that said God does nothing, but that he first reveals it to a servants, the prophet. So that that I believe is referring to the purposes of God, the plans of God. But in this case, 
in a specific situation, God did not reveal to Elisha the situation. So prophets, prophetic people, don't, don't think you've lost your anointing. Don't think, you know, God is not talking to you anymore because you don't see everything and hear everything. Um, don't think that God has left you. Um, God was still with Elisha. He still worked a miracle. It was still an amazing miracle. This young man was raised from the dead. God still got glory from this situation, but hid it from Elisha. Um, when God doesn't show, God can show you things in dreams, visions, give you a word, give you a vision. And God shows people many things. Don't, don't, don't think that prophets know everything and that, you know, if, if you go to a prophet, he's supposed to tell you everything about yourself, you know, because he's not God or she's not God. Okay. They're, they're human. They, you can only receive what God shows you. Um, now you, I believe you can put yourself in a position to hear from God clearly. You can fast and pray and God can reveal things to you. But there are times when God just hides things, the hidden things, the secret things belong to the Lord. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's God's, it's, it's a mystery. God hides it. God has a right to do that. Um, God hides it in his wisdom. God doesn't reveal everything. We have to walk by faith. We have to live by faith. Even if you're a prophet, you live by faith. You walk by faith. Um, you can only go by what God shows you. Um, you can only go by the revelation God gives you. And if God doesn't show it to you, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't force God to do it. God is God. God has the right to hide things. And um, one scripture says, it's the glory of God to hide a thing. And it's the glory of kings to search out a matter. So a part of God's glory is actually hiding things. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's a part of God's mystery, God's glory, um, God's majesty, God's power, um, God's wisdom. Um, we serve a God that does have secrets and mysteries. He reveals it to some people. You can have a spirit of revelation, a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of knowledge. Some people receive more than others. Uh, but God is a God of, of, of revelation, of mysteries. I mentioned yesterday, uh, allow God to speak to you in different ways. God can show you things uh, in different ways. Uh, God can speak to you in different ways and reveal things to you. But if you don't see it, don't panic. Okay, If you don't see it, don't think that God has left you. If you don't see it, doesn't mean that God is angry with you. It just means that God has kept it from you. Elisha, the man with the double portion, one of the greatest prophets of God uh, in scripture was an individual that um, God actually hid uh, this revelation from. So be encouraged, prophetic people. Go by what God shows you. Be open to revelation. Be open to the voice of God. Um, understand that other aspect of God as well, that God does hide things. Uh, we can seek things out. We can pray for revelation. We can ask God. But there's some things that God keeps us see. I believe there are things that we won't know until we get to heaven. I believe there are things that we will not comprehend until we get to, to glory. Um, and so um, there are things that, that we'll never know even on this earth. Many things God can reveal to us, but I think that there are things that we'll never really fully understand. Okay, I want to I want to discuss that today. We're going to interview who sold and gave today through Facebook. I appreciate it. Uh, I may not be doing a a live in the morning. I may not be doing a porch in the morning, uh, but we will we'll, we'll pick it up probably Friday. So I'll see many of you Friday morning. And so uh, again, until you hear from me again, God bless you and double shalom.